there are likely to be quite considerable impacts of the pandemic, but we have to first state that whatever we say here is speculative. Um, so I think the important thing is the concept of the pandemic and the secondary lockdown and the social isolation that's then forced upon all our people with Parkinson's might have some effects. And largely these relate to the stress of social isolation, the stress of lockdown, not being able to perhaps be in touch with the clinicians or nurse specialists, that can aggravate anxiety, which we know is a major issue in Parkinson's anyway, and can also cause problems with mood, particularly depression, which can have an indirect effect on sleep as well. The second effect of the social isolation is, um, is lack of exercise. And unless somebody is motivated or instructed to do regular app-based or virtual exercise programs, the lack of exercise itself might have a deleterious effect on the Parkinsonian state, some aspects of motor function as well as non-motor function. So those are the broadly the, the possible effects of the lockdown and the social distancing and isolation that you might, you might have to, uh, or people are undertaking because of the pandemic. The second more important question comes, what happens to a person with Parkinson's if they develop and have COVID-19 infection? Now, at this moment in time, there is only one factual basis to it, which is a case series published literally a couple of weeks back from uh, Angela Antonini and our group, which um, shows the data, data on 10 people with advanced Parkinson's uh, who developed COVID-19. Now, broadly, there are, we think there are some direct impacts and some indirect impacts. The direct impact is on cough and breathing. We know that up to 30 to 35% of people with Parkinson's might have impaired breathing anyway. So in these patients, development of COVID-19, which seems to target the respiratory system and might get into the brain by transsynaptic spread, as many of these patients have reduced sense of smell, and reduced sense of taste, hyposmia and agusia, could lead to aggravation of an impaired cough reflex, therefore increased risk of pneumonia. And if they do have pneumonia, uh, difficulty on fighting off that pneumonia. The second uh, effect would be the fact that during this acute infection, again, uh, infection being a stressor, this can again aggravate acute anxiety states and acute problems with uh, mood as well. The third direct effect that we need to think about is there is some evidence that the levodopa requirement goes up during this acute infection. And if that is the case, we need to be aware of it as clinicians, as nurses, that some of these patients who might be admitted to hospital might need increased levodopa requirement, as indeed has been shown in our own case series. The fourth point is some of these patients might also need urgent implementation of non-oral therapies. The risk of the infection is particularly higher if you are somebody with advanced Parkinson's, if you, if you are frail, elderly, and perhaps on advanced therapies. In this situation, there might be worsening of the hypokinesia and levodopa requirement might go up and you might need to um, implement treatment like liquid lividopa therapies or by using transdermal route or by injection route so that adequate dopamine replacement takes place. So those are broadly the direct effects that we can think of if the COVID-19 uh, infection happens, particularly in an older vulnerable subject. But it's important to stress that many young people with Parkinson's who might get COVID-19 may not really have any other symptoms apart from what we see in the normal population, which is really the cough, perhaps a bit of fever, perhaps a bit of breathing discomfort. However, as clinicians, we must be alert to the possibility that some of these patients may have more acute symptoms.